Hi, so we are the Eternal Sounds podcast, um, and I'd like to introduce everyone. I'm Isaac. That was ominous. I'm Ace. <laughs> I'm Austin. I'm Brett. And I'm Lucas. And yeah, again, we are the Eternal Sounds podcast, and uh, let's just get right into it, you know? Uh, so first, I just want to know, what's, what's your recent music taste been like? Recently, I've been listening to the new Avenged Sevenfold album a lot. Life is better. It's like a. It's basically a prog rock album, I'd say. Uh, it's very weird. Uh, my favorite track off that is probably a track called Cosmic. It's like a six-minute-long thing with like a two-minute guitar solo. It's kind of bonkers. Um, let's see what else. The Strokes, the new Abnormal. Uh, I recently discovered that album after seeing Red Hot Chili Peppers live when they open, when the Strokes open for them, and. Yeah, that's what I've been listening to recently. And Ariel Posen. Uh, he's a dude from Canada. He plays slide guitar. He's really good. What about you, Ace? Uh, like recently? Yeah. Like in the... I want to say the past day. Uh, gotten into like U2 and Radiohead. Mm. I lo- it's only like a couple of their songs. Yeah. Because that's how I usually listen to things. But like... Uh, the Fly from U2 and Karma Police by Radiohead. <laughs> Those are two songs I really like. Nice. Awesome. Uh, it's funny that you say that. I'm a huge of so cool fan. <laughs> I love it so cool fan. <laughs> they're, they're my favorite band of all time. I'm close. They're really. awesome. I almost had the chance to see them like on in October, really? but I'm going out of town the same day. I really wanted to go. My girlfriend, my girlfriend was gonna buy me tickets. Cause she also loves them, but I'm going out of, my, out of town and my parents won't let me. That's so unlucky. I know, I'm so sad. I, w- I would do anything to go. Yeah. Cause I'm not a huge concert person, but I love their music. Yeah. They're, they're, they're my number one. It's not even close. <laughs> Cause, and that new, that new album's pretty interesting. It's very interesting. It's, it's a lot different, but Cosmic is good. I like Mattel. I mean, yeah, yeah. I really like Nobody. Nobody's also really good. I want to learn the guitar part, but I know it's like it's hard. way too difficult. It's hard I'm, I'm learning hard. Ordinary right now, the solo ordinary. at the end. That's on the stage, right? No, no, no. It's that's a, that's also the there? Album. That's on the new album. Yeah, I still haven't listened to the entire thing. Uh, it's like the Daft Punk oh, <laughs> sounding really? song. Yeah. And at the end, of the, they have this like huge jazz solo, like Mario Kart sounding thing. It's pretty awesome. I'm a huge fan of their old work, man. Like, mm-hmm. it's that's that's some of the best music. Yeah. I know how to play backcountry. Backcountry really good like, guitar. Yeah. I'm a, I have a... <laughs> I have Sinister Gates' signature guitar. Oh, really? It's custom S. That's so sick. Yeah, I spent so much money on that. <laughs> nah, I, I, it's, it's, it was worth every penny, though. <laughs> nice. So what song uh, recently have you been listening to? What songs? Um, my favorite song by them is Save Me. Mm-hmm. It's 12 minutes long. Wow. So, but other than that, I like I like a lot of metalcore. Mm-hmm. Both for my Valentine. Um... I like Holy Diver. It's oh, a yeah. Idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I just like metal. Metal's a huge thing for me and inspiration, really. Yeah. So that's really all I've been listening to. What are you, Brett? For me, it's kind of been pretty mixed, but I like mainly li- r- listen to like rap and other mm-hmm. genres. But uh, currently, uh, like I'll like listen to whatever I hear and think sounds good. Yeah. So recently, that's, that's me. I have a 1,000 song playlist of just like songs I like. So recently, uh, I've been like listening to like Lil Baby mm-hmm. and like Drake and Jack Harlow and just like multiple different songs of theirs. I haven't done a deep dive into like rap. I like, I, I've like, I haven't really tried. The only rap I'd say I'd listen to is like Tyler the Creator. <laughs> and that's like, I don't know how, how exactly rap that is um just because it's like very jazzy I'd, I'd say in my opinion but um yeah i gotta do a deep dive into those so if you got me any record rec- the recommendations and you know i'll definitely take some what are you lucas uh i've been i've i mean a lot of different things um, mm-hmm. recently i've also been into rap to a lot of listening to a lot of 21 mainly and then mm-hmm. a little bit of Drake too but then I also like um, I also like rock too mm-hmm. my one of my favorite bands is probably the Smiths oh um, yeah they're really good I love I love that feel that the feeling that they give their songs like that I don't know 
know, it's like almost a longing, but like nostalgic. It's, it's sad, but it's like bittersweet, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So, we're gonna go into the next thing um, really quickly, because this is gonna take a while. <laughs> um, yeah, so we decided to react to a song, um, and the song that we came to a decision to react to is Weird Fishes slash Arpeggi by Radiohead. Um, so what were y'all's like first thoughts listening to this song? Have you lost, did you listen to it before? Um, yeah, yeah? I, I've listened to songs like three years ago. <laughs> it's I, a good song. It's a really good song. I never listened to the song before. Really? I haven't either. But it's on my playlist. It's on your playlist? Yeah. <laughs> I, I only put it on my playlist like... You, so Apple Music has these like radio station things. And I think it showed up on, on that. Like it's just Isaac's, Isaac's station. I think it showed up on that and I completely forgot about the song. But then I saw a YouTube video like analyzing it like the live performance of it um and like going down like every detail and i was like huh oh, this song's pretty good <laughs> so i started listening to it again um and just realizing like how complicated that song must have been to like make is so crazy um so what do you what, what like how did it make you feel oh how, like the first time listening to it if you remember it how did it make you feel I mean, if I had to say something about the song, like, first time listening to it, mm -hmm. um, it sounds very nostalgic. Yeah. It's, like, very out there. It's definitely not, like, a norm for a type of song to do mm -hmm. stuff like that because it branches off and with this renaissance, era, like, area in the song. Yeah. And I really like that part. It's really nostalgic. That's, like, the only way I can feel it. Like, I can explain it. Yeah, yeah. think of like I don't know like when I when I listen to songs I visualize like you know music videos to it which is weird um, but that's just like how I visualize songs when I think of it I just think of um, you all know what a fractal is yeah have you seen those videos like zooming in mm -hmm. on it and just it's just like infinite patterns and stuff that's yeah, what I think yeah, yeah. of the other visual I think of when when I listen to the song is like a I don't know how to describe it. It's like a river, but with, like like a river like just with like neon like like glowing and, and stuff. Uh, something from like Undertale is what I is what I think of. Yeah, um, that's like the first comparison I can draw to it. I don't know. I just it makes me think of so, like fireflies, like like flying around, and it's a very weird feeling because. It's very calm, but near the end, it like builds up, and I love how it builds up and just like it goes into this explosion of like emotion and stuff. It's a very emotional song, I think. I think that the lyrics have something to do with depression. Um, but it's a Radiohead song, so it makes sense. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what about you, Brett? What do you think? Uh, I have to agree with him. Like it was pretty nostalgic. Like it like felt nostalgic and like. Felt like you were like free at the same time because like what i noticed in like different songs is like the feeling of it and how mm -hmm. it, like it like it's like expressed in a way mm -hmm. and so it just like gives you that nostalgic like feeling and like free feeling kind of yeah i think the that visual i have of like the river or whatever like a glowing river or something like that i mean obviously it's called weird fishes so it makes it makes a lot of sense that I uh, identify with the water. But I mean, the first line of the song is in the deepest ocean. Um, um, I don't know. It's such a great like the there's so many like metaphors and stuff. It's such a hard song to decipher. Um, because I mean, what y'all what y'all think of the first lines in the deepest ocean and the bottom of the sea? Your eyes they turn to me or they turn me. Sorry. What do you what do you think listening to that? Like it first sounds time? like somebody somebody found someone they love at the very dark part of their time. Mm -hmm. That's what I really think about when I hear something like that. Yeah, I think that's that line really resonates. Yeah, because it's like exactly what yeah. <laughs> what's happened to me. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
why should I, why should I stay here? Why should I stay? So he's asking like why he wants to stay at the bottom of the ocean. Um, do you think that means like it'd be harder for him, or like it'd be easier to stay in like a dark place rather than try to work to improve it's improve himself? Ten times easier, easier to stay in the dark than reach out for help. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah, and then let's see. Turn me on to phantoms. I follow the edge of the earth and fall off. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is where like this is Radiohead song. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously gonna be a little bit cryptic. Yeah. So Does it all make you think of anything? Like just first time hearing that again? Do you want to hear it again? Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Turn me on to phantoms. I fall to the edge of the earth and fall off. Flat earth. <laughs> flat, flat Earth, earth Radiohead, Flat yeah, Earth flat Conspiracy earth. Theory. Oh my lord. Ba going off of like what you guys said, because mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't have like any deep metaphors like going through my head when I listened to it. I just yeah. thought, oh, rainbow fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of just generally what I thought. <laughs> I uh kind of just thinking like I you know Y'all scream. <laughs> Kill <laughs> <laughs> Killing yourself? <laughs> that that, that uh, actually makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> this is for the thing of the song. But the, the my like my thing with that is that it doesn't tie into that person coming to your life. Do you think they're on the edge of doing it? Or they fall off to the edge, which means they're about to do it? And then and then, yeah, everybody leaves if they get the chance, and this is my chance. So he has a chance of doing it. He hasn't done it yet, or they haven't done it yet. Yeah, I feel like that line ties into, like, why should I stay here? I mean, in the... Why should I stay here? In or, the, yeah, in, in, in the, the deeper social... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. It yeah. seems like they're looking for, like, an escape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. took that much more optimistically. It's like, everyone gets a chance to leave the darkest ocean. Mm -hmm. This is my chance. It could honestly go so many different ways. There's so many different ways to interpret it. I love songs like that because, in my opinion, I don't think songs should have any one meaning to anyone. Because, based on your experiences, it's gonna be like the way you take the song is gonna be way different than another person. And, like, songs like this where you can't really pin down one meaning it's just great to see how it resonates with other people and hearing like their opinions on it like how it's impacted them so yeah um it's my chance and then the next lines i get eaten by the worms and weird fishes picked over by the worms and weird fishes <laughs> that delivery um and then he says weird fishes two more times yeah <laughs> clearly yeah he is i i Bro's getting eaten. Yeah, bro's getting eaten. And like you said, he's in the deepest ocean. Maybe he's yeah. just let himself float there. The thing that I'm thinking of with everything else we got said so far is like, you mm. know how like when you die, your corpse is eaten. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking, Brett? Um. Yeah, I think it's just like he feels like he's lost. Mm. And yeah, like he's like in a hard situation it's just trying to get out of it yeah actually you know what i think what i just thought of he says he gets eaten by the worms and weird fishes and worms are usually bait so he's putting himself like be like below below like fish bait uh, so I, I like in this in this food chain he's at like the lowest of lows which also ties into the deepest ocean part which makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Weird fishes. Goes crazy. Well, I guess that makes sense. Just not. I'm, I'm talking like logistically, not even metaphorically. Like the deepest of the ocean, you find like the anglerfish and yeah. stuff, which could also represent his demons. Um, and then the. Um, I guess the worms could be like. If it's bait, then that could be like his way of getting out. But he's also getting eaten by by like by like how difficult that could be. 
All right. And then he says, yeah, I'll hit the bottom. Hit the bottom and escape. Escape. And I'll hit the bottom. Hit the bottom and escape. 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 I think he went back to the entire thing about going off the edge. And when he hits the bottom, that's when he's relieved. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like the very basic meaning, like what I can think of. Mm -hmm. Once you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. Well, the, like, <laughs> tying back into that, like, fall off the side of the earth line, um, it's like, it makes me think, is he actually gonna do it? You know? Is this, is the narrator of this song actually gonna, you know, um, toaster bath? Uh, <laughs> sounds like he's just, like, he's, he's contemplating doing it, he's talking about it, it's like he's stalling or something. Yeah. Oh! It's, that... Really that makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah. yeah. Ooh. That's something to think about, actually. Yeah, because it like when you when you want to do something but you don't like don't have the guts to do it, you kinda just talk about it. Mm. It's either he doesn't have the guts to do it or he just doesn't want to do it. But he's convinced himself. One of those two, yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Ooh. The audio. <laughs> Weird. Okay. But um So reflecting on those lyrics. And if you hadn't done like a little, like a deep dive into it before this session, how does this change your view of the song? My perception on this song, because whenever I listen to music, it doesn't really matter what kind of music it is. I'm, I always imagine the drummer playing the drum part. Yeah. Since I, that's for some reason, that's always what's resonated with me the most. Mm -hmm. Like, especially in this song, because this song's drum pattern is crazy. Oh, yeah. It's, I think it's um, in a different time. Than the actual song is. Oh, it is. And um, I, I like I imagine like a scene from Whiplash where everything's black, <laughs> but but the drum kit and yeah, the yeah. just going crazy. But whenever I like research my like research the songs, I start to realize and I start to open up, and then my mind starts to show me stuff that like I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. So from now on, when I listen to this, I'm probably gonna think of an ocean or something. Yeah. Because that's what makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you said like rainbow fishes. Yeah, because and stuff, which makes fishes. sense because it's, it's <laughs> yeah the, the the albums in rainbows. Yeah, <laughs> so that makes sense. Uh, I don't think this will really change how I listen to it mm -hmm. because I still view it as a very serene type of song at the end of the day. But you know, whenever I'm like thinking about it like too hard, now I can just you know, oh the now it's on the cry too. Woo <laughs> yeah. Um, thinking about it now, because I before this I hadn't really done a deep dive into the lyrics. Um, it's almost like he's come to peace with this thought process, because the song's so like, you know, it's it's so calm yeah. at first, but then like, I feel like the more pressure he's feeling, the the harder the song goes. So by the end, it's just a huge like explosion. And he doesn't know what to do with himself. And that's how I'm gonna start taking it. Cause it makes a lot of sense. Um, just like in, in my head when receiving the song. What about you, Brett? Uh, yeah, I think it's like an interesting song and all. And uh, it definitely like, it's kind of like emotional mm -hmm. and like show, shows the actual like singer's feelings a lot and it like, it's like questioning a lot of things. Yeah. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting song overall. I, there, there's a lot of conflict in the song. Yeah. A lot of contrasting ideas, ideas and argue, sort of arguing with himself, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or at least his thoughts are just going against each other, like trying to. Feels like trying to make a decision mm -hmm. but <laughs> you I think there's really still a way out yeah yeah, like, yeah I don't really know how to describe it it just seems like, like conflicted mm. yeah so I think that concludes this episode of the Eternal Sounds podcast um, and again, I'm Isaac, I'm Ace, I'm Austin, I'm Brett, and I'm Lucas. 
And again, we are Eternal Sounds. We'll see you next time with a song by either Coldplay, Modest Mouse, Interpol, Foo Fighters, or System of a Down. You'll have to come next week to, to figure out who. So yeah, thank you so much. Hope you all have a great day. And goodbye.